You want to know what's wrong with the American education system? It all starts with money. Public education is a government-funded entity, which means it's a business. When you turn anything into a business, its primary goal is centered on money, and therefore, in the case of public schools, not on actually providing young people with the information needed to become productive members of 21st century society. The government's best intentions for productive schools fail before they can begin because it measures scholastic success under a rigid system of numbers. The beautiful nonlinear mosaic of intellectual potential that is the human mind is relegated into numbers on spreadsheets to represent how smart our children are and how much they've grown from one year to the next. State governments provide all their schools a strict regime of those tests each semester. The mere notion that all schools in all areas of a state will be taking the same test is already deeply flawed. A child from an impoverished area who has one parent that has no time to spend with him or her and only eats when the school feeds him or her is going to take the same test as a wealthy child on the other side of the state whose parents take him or her from school to horseback riding lessons. Not only are the impoverished schools given children that come from non-propitious family environments, but those schools also get funded based on the money in their district. So students with radically different home lives attending schools with radically different resource levels are taking the exact same standardized test in an effort to fairly compare those students and their teachers. University research for years has conclusively proven that standardized testing does not effectively assess a student's knowledge of a given topic. Despite this information, states continue to strangle school systems across the country with the grips of their end-of-course exams. Why? Because it's the most convenient form of assessment despite its wild inaccuracy. What more bureaucratically efficient way is there to pass judgment on a young mind than by telling it to mark bubbles on a sheet which will be whizzed through a scanner and have a number of automatically recorded, stamped, and filed? Tack on to those poor assessments the knowledge that students' success on those tests is what contributes to a school's average yearly progress rating, AYP. All standardized tests go into this overall composite score, which is what the school will be labeled as for the entire year. The government has decided that its best way to improve education is to set each school on an AYP plan that will give them a steady progression of goals to reach each year. For example, a school that had an overall composite of 45% might be told that it needs to make 55% next year, then 70% the year after that, then 80% the next year, and so on, until in theory that school is averaging a total composite of 100% in all subjects across the board. For every year that school reaches its projected number, its administration gets to celebrate and flaunt its AYP achievements to other schools like the dick measuring contest that it is, and in many states, it's provided additional funding as a reward. If a school doesn't make AYP, however, it's considered a failing school and is audited by the state. The State Department of Instruction heavily regulates the school, sending in agents to keep an eye on things, and in many states, if the school continues to fail to meet AYP, funding is cut and the school continues to suffer, typically by cutting teachers as a result, because you need to blame somebody. Anyone who's passed a middle school math course should know that this method for monitoring school progress is flawed at a rudimentary level. On a base level, there are too many important variables in constant flux. The freshmen of a high school this year are expected to contribute to a much higher school score by the time that they are seniors, and that makes a fair amount of sense. However, every year a new group of students enters, and a group of students that were used to originally base the goal's calculations graduate. Also, students drop out and move while new students enroll every year. A school is projected to maintain its 100% AYP score if it ever reaches it. The goal system completely removes students and environmental variables from the equation and assumes that if any student gets anything less than 100% in any subject, it must be the teacher's fault, so long as the school has a few years to get the test scores that high. These test scores that don't have a damn thing to do with how much a student learns are all that the state government cares about. So they force that pressure on the districts, who force it on the superintendents, who force it on the administrators, who force it on the teachers, who force it on the students, who suddenly only care about a test at the end of the year, because that's all they've been taught to care about. But when it comes to the problems with public education, we're just getting started.